What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Recently I've been getting a few comments asking why I typically do my visual effects compositing inside of After Effects rather than using Blender's inbuilt compositor. I think this is a pretty fair question as Blender's node-based compositor has come a long way over the years and is very good for advanced and complex composites. That said, most of the time I'm doing some fairly simple composites and the After Effects layer-based workflow is just enough for me and tends to be a little bit simpler. I thought I'd make this quick video comparing the same visual effects set extension shot, one of them composite composited in Blender and one of them composited in After Effects and kind of go through both of the different compositing setups showing how we created each shot and they're not the exact same result. The color correction is a little bit different but generally they get the same idea across. So uh, anyways guys this is our general scene setup here. As you can see here I have our live action shot in the background here and uh, then I've just imported our City Builder 3D Hong Kong procedural asset which I demoed in our last video um, but I've just added these to our background background, I've added a basic HDRI world to the scene to try to match this environment as well as a ground plane to create the general reflection from below on our buildings here. I'm going to do a full tutorial on this shot next but in this video we'll just go through the compositing breakdown since I've already done it. But I've just rendered out a still frame of these buildings here and in the compositor as you can see here this is our final composite with color correction and everything and uh, this is our compositing node tree setup here and if you're new to node based compositing it can look a little bit complex, but it's actually pretty simple. I'll just go through the different inputs that we've composited here until our final result and then compare that to our After Effects project. All right, so the first input we have here is just our basic CG building beauty pass here. And I've just input that into a transform node to uh, bring it up a little bit higher in our scene to just kind of reposition it a bit better for my own desired taste. Then I've run it through a color balance node to color correct it toward the color of our general live action shot as well. In addition to our color balance node here, I've uh, reduced the contrast using an RGB curve setting. The reason I did that is because as I mentioned in previous videos, as things get further off into the distance, they get a general reduction of contrast as well as a reduction of saturation as there's kind of that atmospheric fall off from uh, the particles in the air and everything. So I've just used our live action background here to to kind of uh, judge the general look of the color tone and saturation for our CG element here. And then I've run that, as I mentioned, through a human saturation node. I brought down the saturation a little bit by 10% actually, then running that to a bokeh blur node, which is just giving it a slight blur. I've only done a tiny bit of blur here, but just enough to kind of blend it into the background. And after doing that basic color correction, I've used a little grain element here with a movie clip, and I've run that through a human saturation node to bring down the saturation as there was some color noise on it and then I've run that through a blur node to give that grain a little bit of blur and then I've combined that on top of our CG element here to add some grain to the CG element to match it to our live action shot. As you can see here, we have some grain in our live action shot. So we want to try to add that grain on top of our CG element here. So that's what we've done with these nodes. And if I wanted to, I could actually increase the amount of grain with this factor node here. But uh, after color correcting our CG element, it was time to mask out the foreground layer here. So I've added a few different inputs here for the mask of the foreground building. The first one here, I've just used an input of our movie clip, and then these are the basic undistortion and scale nodes that Blender creates when you track the footage so that it fits your render. So those will be there by default. I've used a distance key to uh, key out the sky. So I've used the general key color of the sky, and then I've adjusted the tolerance and fall off so that most of the sky is an alpha channel in our scene. So I'll go ahead and just add a viewer node here to show you guys real quick. Just go to image here. Maybe actually we need to just go here. As you can see, it's just kind of cutting out the portion of our image where the buildings are in the foreground. And this particular view node is obviously before we've done a few of these effects here. I've added an invert and a dilate erode and a blur node next to kind of blur all of the artifacts here in the sky. Because obviously this distance key and the uh, sky element in our scene is not a perfect key. It's uh, not just like a green screen, for example. It's uh, you know a uh, sky that is actually relatively similar to the color of our buildings in the foreground so it's a little bit trickier you kind of have to use the luminous value of that sky rather than the color of it like you would do with a green or blue screen for example 
But uh, anyways, after using that distance key to key out the sky, I use an invert node to invert the alpha. Then I've used dilate erode to bring back the mask a little bit so that the edges were a little bit more harsh. And uh, then I've added a blur node to blend that mask so that we can overlay it more effectively on top of our CG shot. And finally, with this node here, I've combined the CG element with our first mask here with a set alpha node. What this node is doing here is it's taking the data from our mask layer and and telling our CG element to only have an alpha channel on the areas where our mask doesn't exist. So that's why it's cutting out our building here so that it can more seamlessly integrate into the background. And after adding that first mask, I still had some issues with this foreground building here as well as some of this building because it was a little bit too close to the color of the sky. As you can see here, if I add another viewer node, you can see that our sky is the same color as our building here in the foreground. So we were getting some overlapping of our CG building on top of this building in the foreground, which is obviously what we don't want if we want to integrate that into the environment. So what I've done here is I've added a new input with our main live action movie clip. I've uh, also duplicated that undistort and scale node to make sure it's the right scale for our shot. And then I've created a mask node input here that's uh, of the mask I've created in our masking tab here so I've just as you can see here I've just masked out some of our main elements here in the foreground and then I've used that mask as an input again through a set alpha node so that we could overlay this part of the footage on top of our CG element so that again it integrates into the scene and we have those foreground elements from the live action shot overlapping in the scene anyways after doing that I've combined all of these different inputs in an alpha over node with our live action footage and then finally to integrate our CG into our live action shot even better. I've added our movie clip again and overlaid it on top of this entire composite. And then as you can see here, if I change the factor, I can actually overlay the entire movie clip on top of our CG element here. And as you can see here, you can see before and then after as we literally overlay the color of the entire footage on top of our composite. And uh, normally the way I do this in After Effects is I will just use a tint layer and then choose the color of the sky or something and then tint the whole CG building that same similar color. But uh, this is just a nice way to do this if your uh, background isn't something that has a lot of detail in it that would mess up the detail in your CG element element that you're adding. But uh, anyways, I've mixed in the live action shot of our movie clip to integrate our CG element a bit better. Then finally, I've added another color balance node on top of our final composite, as well as an RGB curves to bring down the brightness a bit for our final composite. And uh, this is a fairly simple setup here, but as you can see, not the simplest to look at. Now let's take a look at the After Effects composite and see what we've done there. All right guys, here is our final compositing setup inside of After Effects here. I've tried to generally match the final output and color correction of this shot to the one we've also created in Blender to try to get the same general look. As you can see here, I'll kind of uh, put them side by side on the screen maybe. They're not uh, totally the same, but they're pretty close. And I'll just go through the layers one by one here and show you the general setup that I've used inside of the After Effects layer-based compositor here. So uh, on the bottom here, we just have our live action shot then of course I've tracked our footage I've just done a very basic point track and tracked our null object on here I didn't mention it but in the blender shot I've also done a very basic tripod track for that as well on top of the null object that we used for our tracking data, I've added our main beauty pass output of our set extension from Blender. And as you can see here on this specific layer, I've added my various effects to blend it into the footage a bit better, which would be the same thing as all of the effects that I've done in this area right here. So uh, as you can see here, I've added a basic lumetry color to kind of tint the image and color correct the CG element to the live action shot. I've added some grain to the shot and I've added some of that camera lens blur to match the blur of our background environment. After color correcting our CG element, I've created a mask overlay with our live action footage. So as you can see here, if I enable it really quick, I've just created a basic mask here of our foreground element. I've used the extract tool to extract the part of the image that was brightest like the sky. And uh, then I've blurred it with some camera lens blur on this specific layer. And on our CG building, I've used an alpha inverted mat of that mask overlay to use that data to hide the part of the CG building where that mask is. 
And in addition to this, just like I did in Blender where I masked out some of these foreground buildings on our actual CG element building, I've created a little mask here to mask out some of this building here in the far background that kind of matches our general sky color. So the extract tool wouldn't work very well on it. And then I've also masked out this uh, building very close to the foreground as well, right on that CG element layer. After doing this, I've duplicated our CG element and extracted only the brightest parts of the image with an extract effect. And then I've added some glow to the neon signs in our shot. I didn't actually do this step inside of Blender because I didn't think I needed it. I think it already looks pretty good in our Blender composite, but in After Effects, I was also adding some tint on our main CG element here, which started to take away some of the brightness of our neon sign. So that's why I've added this glow layer as well. And then I've also used that alpha inverted matte of our main footage that I've used that extract effect on. And after doing that, just like I've done in Blender, I've duplicated our live action shot and over overlaid that with a very low opacity to kind of blend in our live action element a bit better. And uh, finally, just added some very basic color correction with the Lumetree color tool here and a little letterbox for this final result. And in conclusion, I think both the composite in After Effects as well as the composite in Blender are both pretty usable composites. Um, if we wanted to make them better, we could of course, you know, add some atmospheres or uh, variation to blend in our CG buildings to our live action shot a bit better. But I think the the point I'm trying to make here is not that After Effects or Blender are necessarily better than each other. I think they're both just a tool to get the job done. However, I do think for simple shots like this, where there isn't a lot of complexity, in my opinion, the layer-based workflow of After Effects tends to be a little bit simpler to set up. That said, I think that for more complex and advanced composites, the node-based workflow is probably the way to go. But uh, anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this kind of compositing workflow comparison here. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let me know what you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time.